Hello and welcome to this Saturday's edition of Alaska Weather. Up first, uh, let's see, we've got satellite imagery. We've got You see a band of clouds streaming northward from the Pacific right up into the southeast interior with some clouds all the way up to the uh, upper Yukon River there. Uh, over the eastern flats over toward Eagle, but uh, that's just mid and high level clouds, dry conditions there, and mostly sunny skies across the Kenai Peninsula, Kodiak Island, right on up through the Susitna Valley areas into the central interior with temperatures rising into the uh, upper 40s to mid 50s at mid-afternoon today and some clearing also occurring over the southeast coast uh, with basically dry conditions but areas of rain falling along the north gulf coast with uh, some locations picking up anywhere from two tenths to almost half an inch of precipitation in the last 12 hours ending at about uh, 3 p.m this afternoon uh, Cordova, for one, and Dry Bay there southeast of Yakutat was another location. Yakutat picked up about a tenth of an inch of rain. And that moisture did bring some light snow into the central and eastern Copper River Basin about Golcana eastward there. Otherwise, uh, just uh, a few isolated showers out over the west and southwest interior with uh, area of clouds there. And uh, you can see that on the chart here, today's map. Also, the Alaska Peninsula weak trough brought a few showers into the peninsula there with mostly cloudy skies. And then a storm system there just south of Atka Island bringing rain into the eastern Aleutians with uh, rain and snow turning to showers over the western Aleutians and also some moisture bearing down on the Perbaloff Islands. Otherwise, a uh, few skiffs of light snow over the western Arctic coast, northwest interior areas, but nothing significant. And basically dry over the panhandle with a few sun breaks, otherwise mostly cloudy skies with light winds. Light winds over all of interior Alaska and a little breezy out over the Aleutians, north winds uh, anywhere from 25 to maybe 35 miles an hour. And for tonight, those will increase, looking for gale force northerly winds across the central Aleutians tonight to about uh, westward to maybe Amchitka Island and wind and rain pushing into the Alaska Peninsula farther east and northeastward and wind and rain and maybe some light snow mixed in, but nothing uh, accumulating for the Pribilof Islands. Otherwise, the southwest coast dry and mostly cloudy. Same thing for the Bristol Bay area, dry with uh, mostly cloudy skies. And Kodiak Island increasing clouds, but dry conditions through the night, as well as the western interior. So looking at some possible clearing for Cook Inlet and the western interior valleys up to the north slope, maybe the Arctic coast. Risk of an isolated, very isolated snow shower for the uh, Seward Peninsula and Bering Strait. And then look for some snow shower chances, mainly over the mountainous terrain of the southeast interior down to the North Gulf Coast. And a little bit better chance of some showers as moisture increases over the panhandle, but uh, nothing heavy at all. And for tomorrow, cloudy skies with a few showers around for the southeast coast and more of a showery condition for the North Gulf Coast uh, with mostly cloudy skies. And uh, wind and rain push into Kodiak Island, and it stays uh, pretty windy and wet over the Alaska Peninsula with moisture pushing into Bristol Bay and then northward into the southern Kuskokwim Valley and across the Yukon Delta. And look for some rain and snow with uh, brisk northeast winds for the Perbaloffs and still gale force winds in store for the central Aleutians. Could see gusts to 50 miles an hour around Atka. And then those winds uh, diminish considerably as you head west there, becoming light under weak high pressure over the western Aleutians. That ridge shifts eastward on Monday, allowing another front to bring some uh, rain and snow into the far western Aleutians west of Amchitka Island with partly sunny skies in store for Adak and Atka with light winds. Showers for the east Eastern Aleutians and uh, cloudy with uh, rain and snow for the Alaska Peninsula. Also, most of uh, southern Alaska, that front pushing northward and weakening, that'll spread clouds and an increasing chance of uh, moisture across all of southern Alaska, pushing into the uh, North Gulf Coast as well, or the uh, northern panhandle as well as it stays dry down to the south with uh, rather mild temperatures and partly sunny skies. Chance of some uh, rain or snow shower activity over the Koyukuk Valley, otherwise the northern interior looking pretty good with uh, areas of clearing for the North Slope and on out to the Arctic coastal areas. And for lows tonight over the Panhandle, lows in the mostly in the uh, mid 40s for the overnight lows, mid 30s for the Copper River Basin, South Central Alaska, 30 to 35 for the lows, 25 to 30 for the Kuskokwim Valley, and Bristol Bay looking at lows right around 30 degrees, mid-30s for Kodiak Island. 
Highs for tomorrow in the 50s for the southeast coast. Otherwise, 45 to 50 south central Alaska, Kenai Peninsula, mid 40s for uh, Seward up into Prince William Sound, Valdez, looking for a high of 44. Mid to upper 40s for the Copper River Basin, 45 to 50 for the Kuskokwim Valley, and in the 40s for Bristol Bay, mid 40s, Kodiak Island. And then for the lows on Monday morning, right around 40 for the Panhandle, mid 30s for the North Gulf Coast, and generally above freezing for the Susitna Valley, Manuska Valley into the uh, lower to mid 30s from uh, Palmer southward to Homer and Soldovia, as well as Cordova. Soldotna might be down near the freeze point, as well as Gulcana. Otherwise, lower 30s for the Cuscum Valley and Bristol Bay. Taking a look at the highs for Monday afternoon, Lower 50s, 50 to 55 for the Copper River Basin there, upper 40s to lower 50s, South Central Alaska, otherwise mid 40s down along the coast, Seward to Homer, Sildovia, Kodiak, mid 40s, and uh, mid 40s for Bristol Bay, mid to upper 40s for the Cuscoom Valley, and in the 50s for the Panhandle, up to the north. Lows tonight in the 20s for the most part. Uh, Fairbanks may stay above freezing the entire night, but Eagle down to Northway looking around 30. And uh, 15 or 10 to 15 for the Brooks Range and the North Slope to the Arctic Coast, anywhere from 5 to 10 for your overnight lows. And they'll be followed by highs in the 40s for the Central Interior and near 40 for the Northern Valleys there, right around freezing for the Brooks Range and teens to lower 20s for the North Slope and the Arctic Coast and closer to the uh, upper 30s for the Nome area. And then the lows on Monday morning. 25 to 32 for the central and eastern interior, mid-20s for the upper Yukon, Kobuk, and Koyukuk valleys, with teens for the Brooks Range, and uh, 5 to 10 for the North Slope and the Arctic Coast, 20 to 25 for the Seward Peninsula and St. Lawrence Island. And the highs Monday afternoon, 50 to 55 from, uh, say, Fairbanks and Nanana eastward to the border, Otherwise, in the 40s, and then cooling off uh, toward the Seward Peninsula to the uh, 20s and upper 30s there in St. Lawrence Island. And uh, 15 to 20, or into the lower 20s for areas of the North Slope and Arctic Coast. And out to the southwest, lows tonight, uh, 25 to 30 for the southwest coast, upper 20s, St. Lawrence Island to the Pribilofs, and 30 to 35 for the Aleutians mid to upper 30s for the Alaska Peninsula. Highs tomorrow in the mid 40s for the Alaska Peninsula, near 40 for the Aleutians, cooler out west, mid 30s for the Pribilof Islands, right around 30 there for Savunga and Gamble. Lows fall into the upper 20s, Saint, or the upper 20s for the Pribilofs, 30 to 35 for the lows, basically above freezing for the Aleutians, mid to upper 30s for the lows for the Alaska Peninsula. And Monday afternoon, highs in the lower 40s for the peninsula, near 40 in the central Aleutians. And about 42 for Unalaska, Pribilofs looking at the mid-30s. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Looking at the uh, flying weather for Sunday morning, IFR eastern Arctic coast and IFR over the uh, eastern interior from the Yukon River southward into the uh, North Gulf Coast, most of the Copper River Basin, and then along the coast of the Panhandle, more IFR, Kodiak Island, and the southern coast of the Alaska Peninsula. And then pretty solid IFR band from the eastern Aleutians northward across the Pribilof, St. Matthew Island, St. Lawrence Island, through the Bering Strait and into the Chukchi Sea. Western interior, pretty good. Uh, with VFR down into Cook Inlet, Susitna Valley, most of the Kenai Peninsula, Bristol Bay, as well as the central and western Arctic coast and North Slope. And then for the uh, following day, or for the afternoon Sunday, uh, less IFR out over the Bering Sea, but still enough out there to uh, cover the Pribilofs, but marginal VFR, St. Lawrence Island through the Bering Strait, and uh, pretty good VFR over the western interior, some IFR along and south of the eastern Brooks Range, and also some IFR western Prince William Sound down into Resurrection Bay, and then along the east sides of Kodiak Fognac Islands. Marginal VFR uh, pushing up into at least central and southern Cook Inlet, Kamishak Bay, Togiak Bay, Dillingham, and uh, most of Bristol Bay with improving conditions out over the central Aleutians. Panhandle mostly VFR as well as the eastern interior. And then for the morning Monday, IFR along the Brooks Range out to the western Arctic coast, central Arctic coast as well, North Slope. 
and for the uh, most of the Seward Peninsula on up into Kotzebue Sound, maybe the Selawick Valley, and then uh, IFR over the eastern Bering Sea along the southwest coast, just to the north side of the Alaska Peninsula, Marjo VFR, Adak Atka, Fox Islands, and the Shimi Atu area, and then IFR over the uh, central eastern Gulf of Alaska right up to Yakutat westward along the North Gulf Coast there, covering Prince William Sound into Whittier and Passage Canal, and just east of Resurrection Bay now with uh, some VFR over the central panhandle. And for the afternoon Monday, uh, improving over the southeast coast, uh, some IFR along the central and north coast up into northern Lynn Canal and Glacier Bay areas and IFR for the North Gulf Coast again into the coast range there, trying to push into the Copper River Basin. Probably see some marginal VFR there and with the IFR along the mountains and to the south and then IFR Southern Kenai Peninsula area and also the side of Kodiak Island. IFR possible on the eastern slopes of the western Alaska range with uh, it looks like holding VFR for Northern Cook Inlet uh, up into the uh, Susitna Valley area in the Copper River Basin. More widespread VFR over the central interior that extends up across the uh, northwest Kobuk, Noatak Valley areas and the northwest coast. And then some more IFR pushing in out over the far western Aleutians. For Anatovic Pass tomorrow, marginal VFR there, go IFR, a little thicker moisture toward Adigan. Lake Clark and Merrill, marginal VFR, especially on the eastern entrances. And for rainy, same uh, pattern, so same forecast, marginal VFR there for that pass. Windy though, optimistically, VFR flying. And for Isabel, looking good, VFR for Isabel Pass, Mintasta, VFR, Tanita, VFR. Portage though, IFR, probably an eastern entrance, could be marginal on the west side, but a little too close to call, so IFR covers it pretty good. And for Chilkoot and White, marginal VFR, improving to VFR. Freezing levels, uh, 2,000 feet there over the lower Yukon River Valley area into the northern Kuskokwim, otherwise uh, six to 8,000 feet over the Panhandle, 2,000 feet just uh, grazing the Alaska Peninsula and eastern Aleutians. Icing uh, with that uh, system pushing a fair amount of moisture up. So look for some isolated moderate rime icing, Kodiak Island, pushing into southern Cook Inlet, Kenai Peninsula, across the southwest interior there, wrapping back around into the central and eastern Aleutians. And then also some elevated icing possibilities up over the northeast interior. And for the jet stream, southwest flow with the uh, upper level low trough axis there over the eastern Bering Sea. So southwesterly 65 to 75 knots, mostly right across Kodiak Island. Even stronger northerly winds out west up to 95 knots, 3,000 feet, 40 to 55 knot winds circulating around that low over the southeast Bering Sea and 3,000 feet up to 60 knots from the southeast into the uh, northeast Bristol Bay area. Turbulence, considerable moderate turbulence, uh, Bristol Bay, Kodiak Island, and the central Aleutians. Leatherbacks are the largest turtles on Earth, growing up to seven feet long and weighing more than 2,000 pounds. These sea turtles are among the most highly migratory animals on Earth, some traveling up to 10,000 miles a year between their nesting and feeding grounds. Prevalent in every ocean except the Arctic and Antarctic, the species overall is declining, more so in the Pacific. In the Eastern Pacific, the Mexican population was once thought to be the largest in the world and has experienced an alarming decline. This trajectory of decline that we've seen and actually collapse, we're talking about only 20 or 30 turtles nesting every year where thousands used to just 40 years ago. That's the kind of dramatic decline. The Western Pacific population has been declining steadily and it's particularly critical to act now before it collapses while there are enough turtles in nests to respond to conservation measures. But threats to all leatherbacks in the Pacific need to be addressed. The top threats to populations are uncontrolled coastal development, all the bad stuff on the nesting beaches, egg harvest, poaching of the females predation on the eggs by dogs and pigs. Deforestation makes the sand too warm and dry for the, and the eggs don't hatch. 
Another one is incidental capture in fishing gear. During their vast migrations, they get caught in fishing gear throughout the Pacific. And finally, marine debris, which the leatherbacks mistake for their favorite food, jellyfish, and they choke on those. Protecting leatherbacks in U.S. waters alone is not enough to ensure the continued existence of the species. The highly migratory nature of Pacific leatherbacks requires cooperation and international collaboration. NOAA is focusing on partnerships with Mexico, Central America, Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, and the Solomon Islands in the Pacific. Our action plan promotes a holistic recovery strategy that addresses all the sources of mortality. So that's basically ensuring that the remaining nesting sites are protected and the nests produce as many hatchlings as possible. And then secondly, in tandem with that, is reducing the fisheries related mortalities. We're working with international partners to incentivize co community participation on the nesting beach conservation and developing alternative livelihood programs that wean communities off leatherback resources and introduce alternative methods for food and income. Recovery is going to take a long time, on the order of 20 to 30 years at least, before we see some of these actions bear fruit. But here in the U.S., we can all help leatherbacks by making seafood choices, for instance, that support sustainable fishing practices. And beachgoers can certainly do their part by keeping our oceans clean of plastic debris, picking up marine litter, particularly plastic bags. Together with our partners, we are strengthening protection and conservation efforts to ensure a future for leatherbacks, helping them to survive and once again thrive in the waters of the Pacific Ocean. NOAA scientists have been collecting data and piecing together the story of the gray whale. Each year, new discoveries are made, revealing the secrets of this ancient traveler. With the northeastern Pacific population recovered, leading scientists from the NOAA Southwest Fisheries Science Center continue their research efforts to help save the western population from extinction. The most effective way to identify individuals and count the population is to photograph them from the surface. Using the gray whale's distinctive markings and gray spots caused by parasites on their skin, scientists document these characteristics to identify individuals. So we're able to track migratory pathways and corridors by the simple use of photo identification. There are other ways to do that as well, biopsy sampling and genetics. And from the air. Aerial photography is one way you can study animals based on their size and shape. So you can learn a lot about nutritive and reproductive condition of whales just by measuring their size and shape from vertical aerial photographs. You can also put satellite transmitters on them and track them remotely. You put the transmitter on and let them go and you watch them move across the Pacific or down to China or wherever it might be. To further learn and discover where these great sojourners swim, the team of researchers traveled to Russia and set up camp on Sakhalin Island. The main focus of our research uh, while we were on Sakhalin was to collect photo identification. If it was a whale that we had not collected a genetic sample from previously, we would also attempt to collect a sample from the whales. Whereas whales are endowed with natural insulation, their human observers must gear up to brave the cold in order to study these marine giants up close. We're typically only able to work about one third of the time that we're there, and that's mostly due to this fog that just invades the area and sits sometimes for weeks on end. So it can be very challenging to try and do field work in this site. Recently, 
Two whales from the Western population surprised scientists by migrating across the Pacific to the waters of California and Mexico. It's a really fun finding. It's added another piece to the puzzle that we didn't previously know about. And I would have to say that it's opened up more questions than we had before. Research scientists from Japan, Russia, and the United States share images of animals they've spotted. We take a photograph of an individual off of Sakhalin Island, and we get a phone call from Japanese scientists, and they say, hey, guess what? We've got a picture of a gray whale in Japan. We say, can you send it to us? We'd love to try and match it. They'll send us the picture, we'll compare it to our catalog, and they'll say, hey, we've got a match from Sakhalin to Japan. Unlike many species of whales that still remain on the endangered species list, the Eastern Pacific gray whale, once on the brink of extinction, now numbers about 20,000 individuals. Recovery efforts that started 40 years ago and the ongoing research and monitoring by NOAA scientists have contributed to the conservation of the gray whales. Together with legal protection and public education, scientists are playing their part to ensure the survival of this magnificent migratory animal. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Coastal water forecasts for the south coast of the Panhandle Northwest winds 15 to 20 knots. And for the north coast, west northwest 15 to 20 knots, seas 5 to 6 feet. Lynn Canal, south winds for Sunday at 20 knots with 4 foot seas, southeast winds 15 knots for Stevens Passage, and Clarence Strait with seas at about 3 feet. And then for the day on Monday, South coast, uh, Prince of Wales Island along the coast, northwest at 20 knots. Small craft divisors of the central coast, south winds 25 knots, and uh, 30 knot winds from the south and southeast for the north coast. For Lynn Canal, southerlies at 15 knots, seas three feet. Stevens Passage, north at 20, northwest at 20 for uh, Clarence Strait with four foot seas. Prince William Sound for Sunday, variable winds 10 knots, seas two feet. Northern Cook Inlet, variable winds at 10 knots with three foot seas. Southern Cook Inlet, east winds 20 knots. Kamishak Bay, east winds at 30 knots and southeast at 30 for the Barren Islands. Variable winds at 25 knots with four foot seas for the western North Gulf Coast and variable winds 10 to 15 knots for the eastern North Gulf Coast. And for Mondays, Prince William Sound, small craft advisories, winds southeast 25 knots, seas 6 feet, and small craft advisories for the eastern north Gulf Coast, where winds will be south to southeast 25 to 30 knots, southeast 20 for the western north Gulf Coast, southeast 25 for the Barren Islands and Kamishak Bay with 8 foot seas, east at 20 for southern Cook Inlet, northeast at 10 north of the Forelands. Kodiak Island for Sunday. East to southeasterlies at 25 knots. And uh, for the Alaska Peninsula, east to southeast, 20 to 25 knots. And Bristol Bay, east winds 30 knots with three foot seas. Moving ahead to Monday, Bristol Bay, southwesterlies at 25 knots. And the Alaska Peninsula now looking at west winds, 20 to 30 knots with four to 12 foot seas. And Kodiak Island, uh, small craft advisories for south to southeast winds at 25 to 30 knots with seas up to 14 feet. And for the eastern Aleutians, south to southeast winds 15 to 20 knots. Central Aleutians, gale warnings, northwesterlies, 35 knots. And for the western Aleutians from Kiska to Shimia, northwest winds 25 knots. And for Monday, for the western Aleutians west of Adak, we've got south to southwest winds at 25 knots. For the central Aleutians, west at 30 knots. And for the Fox Islands, northwest, 30 knot winds in the forecast with 10 to 14 foot seas. For the Pribilofs, northeast at 25 for the day on Sunday, same forecast for St. Matthew Island. Kuskokwim Delta Coast, east at 30. Yukon Delta Coast, northeast at 20. And for Norton Sound and St. Lawrence Island, winds will be northeast at 15 knots. For the day Monday, 
St. Lawrence Island, Yukon Delta Coast, and the Cuscombe Delta Coast, north winds 25 knots. And for the Permalofs and St. Matthew Island, winds will be northwest at 30 knots with 5 to 10 foot seas. And up along the eastern Beaufort Sea coast for Sunday, brisk wind advisories for east winds at 25 knots. Central coast, east at 20. Western Arctic coast, east northeast at 15 knots. And the Chukchi Sea, north to northeasterlies, pretty light at 10 to 15 knots. And then moving on to the first uh, day of the work week, Monday, east winds 20 knots for the entire stretch of the Arctic coast, uh, becoming a little more northeasterly from Point Lay to Cape uh, Beaufort, and then Cape Thompson to Wales, north winds 15 to 25 knots. And for tonight, uh, mostly dry over the interior, look for uh, showers of snow continuing, eastern Copper River Basin, possibly down to the North Gulf Coast, rain and snow showers uh, tapering off actually, and a chance of showers a little bit more widespread over the Panhandle, dry in the interior, and uh, wind and rain moving into the Alaska Peninsula from the Eastern Aleutians, and that'll extend into the Northern Bering Sea to St. Matthew Island, not quite reaching St. Lawrence Island. And for Sunday, moisture pushes into the Southwest part of the state, cloudy and showery for the Panhandle, and for Monday, that low center tracks into Bristol Bay. That will put uh, clouds and a chance of moisture across all of southern Alaska. In fact, chance of light snow up across the Seward Peninsula and into the northern Panhandle with a chance of rain and snow there. Dry from the Brooks Range on out to the Arctic coast. Next system bringing some uh, increased wind and precipitation chances into the western Aleutians late in the afternoon. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.